Okay, so three additional points for us to cover. Um, they're not directly related to um, being offensive techniques when it comes to sparring, but they're still important. Uh, the first of those is blocking. So in point sparring, remember, when you're fighting, when you're, you know, you're sparring someone, you're sparring the three things. You're sparring your opponent, you're sparring the clock, and then you're also sparring the five judges that are in your ring. So um, whenever you block, you want to, if at all possible, avoid getting out, get out of the habit of blocking. So if a person's throwing a kick at me, say Bobby is throwing a kick at me, you have some people that have this habit of anytime a technique is coming, they feel they have to block it. They gotta take their hand, they gotta block it away. Or if it's coming in their head, they gotta block it away. You wanna definitely show good position to kind of give the judges the impression that, hey, that kick was thrown, it's way out here, it's nowhere near me, you know, you can't don't call a point for that. But if you're always in the point that in the, have the habit of always um, touching everything and having to block everything, you are setting yourself up to where um, you're giving the judge a piece of information that could cause them to make a bad call. So a good example, say you have a judge that's behind me, right? And Bob throws a roundhouse kick, right? So, so this, we have a judge in this corner, he can't really see what's happening. Bob throws a roundhouse kick and I go, I block it all the way out here. The kick's coming in, I block it all the way out here. Now, that judge can't see what happened. Technically, they, they really should be calling no see. They not, shouldn't be giving, shouldn't be awarding a point for that. But the fact that there's an audible cue, they might say, "Oh well, you know, maybe maybe there was a point. Maybe he did hit him." So, you know, point towards Bob. So, avoid blocking wherever possible. I'm not saying if someone's about to hit you and you're gonna, you know, eat one of the face, not to put your hands up, but as a as a method of practice, avoid blocking um, if at all possible. You know, the best block, you know, to quote Mr. Miyagi, is not be there. Don't be there. Just get out of the way. Use the techniques that we discussed. Um, you know, as far as foot movement and positioning to avoid um, getting hit. Uh, the second is when you, how to deal with a machine gun kicker. So uh, let's say Bob, we're doing, we're, we're, we're right leg, right leg, Bob's a machine gun kicker, so he's the kind of person that when he throws some machine gun kicks, right, my attack surface for him is here, right? Um, so with a machine gun kicker, they, it, it is easier for them to continue to chase you if you circle towards their chest. So let's say Bob is machine gun kicking at me. If I circle this way, it makes it very easy for him to continue to chase me with those machine gun kicks. Much better, whenever you're dealing with a machine gun kicker, is to always go towards their backs. If he's kicking at me, he's kicking at me, instead of circling this way, when he's coming at me, I go towards his back, because it's much more difficult. For example, say Bob's there, and I'm throwing machine gun kicks, right? And he moves. It's much easier for me to chase him this way, versus if he's back here, and I'm kicking, it's hard for me to get back around and hit him. So, Whenever you're dealing with a machine gun kicker, go towards their back. Eventually they're gonna stop because when, when you, if you just keep circling this way, circling in the, in the direction that's harder for them to chase you, they're eventually gonna stop and put their feet down. So that's how you deal with a machine gun kicker. The last point is a small one. It's not, you know, this isn't gonna make or break you, but it might be the difference between a point, is the color of your sparring gear. So um, in Tung Tzu, at least when we, have, when we compete, um, we wear all white. I know I'm wearing black pants today, but normally if we're competing, this would be all white. So if you wear white or all, if you use all white sparring gear, let's say someone throws a punch or a kick in, right? So this is, this is me, someone throws a, throws a kick and my foot's, my, all my foot gear is completely white, there's no red ring, there's no black, there's no cues as to where my foot is, you may or may not lose points that way because you know, it's, 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 it's harder for the judge to tell, you know, were they close, were they, were they here, or were they here? So a small thing, it's not something that, that typically makes a, a difference, but it might be worth one point, um, in a tournament, is use, um, try to get sparring gear that has some kind of design on it, like it says a star on it, has some red on it, has something that, that when you put it up against a white uniform, there's some kind of visual cue as to how, how close um, that you, you are getting to that person. So just an additional tip, those three, uh, again, avoid blocking. When you're dealing with a machine gun kicker, circle to their backside, and then if you don't already have a sparring gear, um, consider getting some that has you see they're a bright color or has some kind of design on it, so it makes it easier for the judges to see how close or how far you're getting to your opponent. Hope these tips help you out. Uh, please like, comment, share, subscribe, and I will see you guys next time.